All right. So here we are um, in the plane of mischief. And today I'm going to be walking through how to run this camp A4, Alice. It's a pretty straightforward camp, but I've seen a lot of enchanters die here. Um, I've done this camp for about six years now. Um, and there's really no reason for a level 60 enchanter to be dying. And so while I watched various people do this camp, I noticed a bunch of inefficiencies. Um, and so I thought I'd put together a quick little video about how to do A4 as an enchanter safely and effectively. Um, and so let's go ahead and get into it. So this is actually a very simple camp as compared to other camps. Um, really long respawn time and the mobs are all essentially identical um, in their behavior. So there isn't much to learn. You don't really need any clickies. Um, you can have a wand of allure if you uh, feel like you need it, but you really don't need much here. Um, in fact, 255 charisma with junk gear is probably more than enough to do this camp. Um, so I would I would probably put this camp on the on the easiest end of the enchanter solo camp spectrum. Um, and so if you find yourself dying here, you're probably doing something somewhat inefficient. So this is kind of the main uh, the main area. This is where the twins spawn, and then back in the other two sections, which we'll see in a bit, there's a a rat and a an ape. And then in this room here, there's a shadow men. Um, and so these are the five mobs that comprise this camp. And you can bind in different spots. Palm is a huge zone. Uh, some people bind over there in the corner. I prefer to bind near the painting at the end of A4. Um, so that's right here in this wide open room. And if you click on this painting here, um, you can through a couple more clicks, you can make your way to kind of the main entrance chest room. And this is where we're gonna grab our pet. Um, a lot of enchanters grab the Gren or Bren that are at A1. Um, there's a lot of challenges with that pet. For one, they're really close together, so you have to pacify one of them. And they have surprisingly high MR. And you can find yourself um, getting into a somewhat tricky situation even at A1, just trying to get the pet managed. Um, and then after that, it's a fairly long run back for from A1 to A4, and the pet can break during that time. So cast your invis on your pet to help um, mitigate that, but it's still a pretty long run. Whereas if you grab the pet, one of these shadowy men from the entrance, um, actually broke right immediately uh they have a very short run back up to a4 and, and you'll see that here in a second uh the other advantage to the shadowy men here in this room is that they don't summon um i think they're 49 or maybe 50 and so uh when you get a break you're not going to get summoned which um, which can be helpful if the mob that you're fighting has already pulled off a summon recently against your pet um, you'll get a couple extra seconds to kind of think and recognize that something is a muck. So we're going to charm it and then, like I said, gate back up to the, uh, the end of A4. And these pets, these shadowy men, are going to kind of walk out of this corner of the wall right here um, that I'm pointing at. We just hang out here. Uh, the spawn time here is 70 minutes and 10 seconds. Ignore the wiki. Um, so I've got the timers here for my previous kills, so we're going to get a spawn here in about two minutes. So usually what I like to do is get the pet up here, um, get it hasted, make sure it has a torch, get feedback on it. Um, and then you can kind of just park it a little bit away from you. Um, another big advantage of getting one of these pets instead of Bren is, again, like I said, they don't summon. And so um, you can break them at will. That 
actually you want dad want dazzle up here um you can just break them and park them and they won't summon you so uh you can just chill it's not a big deal you can do the same with Bran and Gren, of course, but only if they're full health. Um, and so if you have an A1 pet, usually when you break it, um, you're going to get summoned. And so sometimes it's better to break it with a null, and then um, you're going to take a little bit of damage one way or the other. Whereas with these pets, you shouldn't take any any damage between cycles. So I just keep the pet there. Um, I'll use Dazzle on them, a minute and a half or whatever, until it's close to when the repop is going to occur. The repop is going to happen here in about uh, 30 seconds. Uh, and so I just overwrite the Dazzle with the Mez. Remember, you can always overwrite a uh, shorter duration Mez. Uh, you can always overwrite a long duration Mez with a shorter duration Mez. So. And if you start with Dazzle or Entrance, you can always work your way back down. Um, and then one of the other things I do is once I have it charmed, I'll switch out a lure for Boltrans. And I think this is one of the things a lot of the enchanters that do this can't miss. Um, just because you charmed the mob with a lure doesn't mean that during a charm break you have to use a lure. Boltrans, of course, is much faster, so having Boltrans as your Charm Break spell is significantly safer than having a Lure as your Charm Break spell. I'm also starting off this fight with by Rapturing. You'll see a lot of other people that do this camp just sick their pet and start, um, start trying to slow the mob. And if you get a Charm Break right then, you know, kind of right after you've tashed it, your pet is fighting it, but you haven't landed the slow yet. Um, you're going to be in a tough situation because your pet's hasted and the mob you're fighting is not slowed yet. Um, and so I see a lot of people die that way as well. So again, just kind of preparing the mob before you fight it, preparing your pet, preparing the mob, preparing yourself uh, can go a long way to making these fights a lot safer. So... Um, the mob in this case, because I've raptured it and then slowed it and then blurred it, um, has basically no hate on me. It's already slowed. And when charm breaks, if charm breaks, um, I've got two stuns loaded and I've got Voltrans, which is a fast recharm. So the likelihood that uh, I die on a charm break is significantly lower um, than it could be if I, if I weren't as prepared. It does take slightly more mana, of course, to start with Rapture, but um, dying is the most inefficient way to do a camp. And so if you do a camp and you do it quickly, but then you die in the fourth mob, you're automatically the slowest person at the camp. So um, I always prefer to do it in a way that perhaps is slightly slower, but minimizes the chance of dying. So, uh, like I said, this is the uh, the twins' room. There's two of these guys, uh, Bren and Gren. We're gonna kill both of them, um, and then we'll do the two pet, the two animals, and then uh, we'll do twenty two, who's who's slightly harder version of these moms. But these guys don't cast; they don't dispel. Um, they don't have any special characteristics whatsoever. Um, so once they're slowed, it's really a fairly trivial fight. And since we're using a lure, um, it usually, okay, so here we go. So we got a charm break. We're going to stun and we're going to face, try to face Bren because your pet's stunned, right? Um, your pet is going to be stunned from your AOE stun. And so you want to face Bren because he's not going to be stunned. He's too high level to be stunned. So stun. And then uh, and you'll notice I didn't, like that was, there was no, no risk of me dying there basically at all. Um, quick recharm, Boltrans is very, very fast. I lost my Bedlam, who cares? Um, and again, because we blurred, Bren had no threat on me. So once my pet attacked, well, not no threat, but very little threat on me. So once I got the charm back off, 
my pet uh, hit him once or twice, and and it's back on it's back on my pet. So once he starts fleeing, I'm going to swap back to Allure, and I'm going to swap to Dazzle. Um, we've got a respawn here in just a minute, but we want our pet to heal between each cycle. So we put our pet on guard. We mem, uh, like I said, we mem Dazzle. I'm just going to spam this to see if it blurred and blur. And he's going to be stuck here for a minute and whatever, 40 seconds. He blurred, and so now we can just chill here and wait for him to heal back up. And because we're using the Shadow Men again instead of the A1 Bren or A1 Gren, even though he was at 50%, when I broke, he didn't summon me. I could just park him in the corner. So you'll see, you know, I'm on 92% mana. Now, granted, I do have Pot G. I also have FT8. Um, so you might not have all of this, but I think it's fairly obvious that this was very straightforward, very low risk, really not, not, uh, dangerous at all, but it could be made to be dangerous if you did it in an efficient way. Um, so we've got our repop here. We're just going to let zero heal up just a little bit more. up Amphar, some dude. And then again, remember it's Dazzled, but we could override Dazzle with Mez. So we'll, don't forget to do that because if you go straight into a charm, it's going to be Dazzled. And so it could stand there for, you know, um, 30 more seconds or whatever. So uh, make sure you want to, you want to start again with Mesmerize, refresh your Tash, swap back into Boltrans and start with Raptor. And we're just basically going to repeat precisely what we just did. Uh, there's really not too much to it. Um, now, sometimes these guys will resist. When we get to 22, we'll, he's very resistant. Um, sometimes the mobs will resist once or twice, but they, they, they will rarely resist more than that. You can get off three... Um, you can get off three... So if you start with Rapture and then you Tash, you can get off three slow attempts um, before you need to Rapture again. So Rapture, Tash, slow, 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 assuming they all get resisted. As soon as one doesn't get resisted, Blanket, you're good. Um, but if you get to the third slow and they resist the third slow, then you start casting Rapture again. And the really nice thing about that technique um, is that, as you might imagine, this is a lot of mana, but let's say you have terrible luck and actually, when you get to 22, um, because he has such a high MR, you can have very bad luck. I had one 22 that took something like 13 casts to get a slow. And so if you take the, the approach of just sending in your pet and then tashing and trying to slow during the fight, if you get bad luck and it takes eight, nine slows, your pet might just die, right? And then if you get a charm break also, you're in a real tough spot because it's not slowed and you have a bunch of threat on the target. Whereas if you start with Rapture and you do slow, 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 let's say you get three resists, you Rapture again, right? Slow, slow, slow. Let's say you have terrible luck. You get to the sixth slow. You've not done any damage to the target. And so you can just bail out. You can just blanket, reset, met up, right? You've done no damage. You've do you haven't dotted it. Your pet hasn't hit it, right? No harm, no foul. <laughs> and you can just completely reset. Um, and so that's the other advantage of starting with the Rapture technique is that um, if for whatever reason you need to bail out, you can bail out risk-free. Whereas if you stick your pet immediately, you're committed to that fight. Um, now, with your pet attacking, you could still theoretically like cast Blanket on yourself and they might both blur, um, but you're in a much trickier, trickier situation. So again, once the mobs start fleeing, we're going to swap back to Allure and Dazzle. And um, if it's not clear already, these, these mobs are you know exceptionally easy, ex especially using this technique. Um, and by doing it this way as well, you get a lot of time just sitting here. And so you're going you're gonna to regen back that mana 
um, that you're using on the raptures and the slows in the time, most of the time, um, by the time the, the fight is over. So now we're going to go to the other section. And again, nothing unique um, about the next section. Um, 5 and 0, 8. Uh, there's a rat that spawns here and a monkey that spawns here. And I'm actually going to kill them because there's nothing new to be said about that, um, except that I'll show you kind of how I park the pet. Again, parking the pet here in the corner, it won't summon me. So I'm just going to park it here. And about a minute or two prior to this mob spawning, I'm going to break it. I'm going to dazzle. I'm going to let it heal up. And I'm going to do the same thing I just did. Um, so I'm going to stop here. I'm going to kill the rat. I'm going to kill the monkey. And then I'll come back uh, to talk about 22, the only even remotely hard fight at this camp. So we've killed the rat and we've killed the ape. And now we're here in uh, 22's room. So I've parked my pet down at the end. 22 is going to spawn here in about two minutes. So just like with all the previous camps, um, I'm going to break charm and dazzle my pet and let him heal up a bit. Now, like I mentioned before, um, 22 is very resistant. So I do use um, winds instead of normal tash for that extra point. <laughs> Whether or not it actually helps, I'm not entirely sure. Um, and it is possible to get a lot of resists here and um, have to reset. So it's really critical to use the rapture technique on 22. If you decide to ignore the rapture technique for all the other mobs, that's your choice. But if you ignore it for 22, you're going to end up dead um, at some point. Uh, you might you might do 10, you might do 15, but eventually, eventually he's going to get you. So, um, like I said, we've got our pet. He healed up here. We'll go ahead and get him charmed. And since we're using Zero instead of Bren, he does uh, take a bit of time to get 22 dead so we're gonna actually slow it twice um, we'll slow it once at the start of the fight um, and then uh, we will slow it again um, as appropriate a little later in the fight it should be spawning here any second now Right. So, like I said, we're going to start with Rapture, and remember, we can get off three slows, um, three slow attempts per Rapture. So, let's see if we get lucky on the first one. We actually got lucky on the very first one, so that's great. Let's stick our pet. And um, I also like to put Asphyxiate and Cripple on this. Uh, it's not necessary, but... It can sometimes just help get him right over that hump to flee um, before a slow wears off. And um, Cripple, of course, just helps your pet take a little less damage along the way. Um, but again, with us pre-slowing, it's not really necessary. But we're going to be slowing this mob a second time anyway, and then blurring, so... It doesn't. Oh, so we did get a charm break. And we got stunned on our first. So again, we've stunned our pet and we're trying to look at 20, 22. And we have done a couple things and haven't blurred him, so we're going to immediately go into a blur. Looks pretty good. And uh, we did lose our rune. 
So as you can tell, that guy hits a little bit harder. Um, but again, because we had Voltrans, because we had two stuns, because we were prepared, because we had Blanket, we didn't have to really do anything too special here. Um, but we do need to work um, now on our second uh, start working here. We're going to abandon Cripple because we're already 60. The mob's already at 60%. So we're going to start working on our second slow here. If we don't get the second slow off, um, or if you get a bunch of resists, um, that's usually okay. But uh, it's just, again, it's just safer if you can pull it off. And I always put 22 at the end of the cycle anyway. So we've got another turn break. This is actually a really good example because this is showing kind of how things can go wrong pretty quickly at this uh, on this mob. But we're staying calm. We're using Voltrans to recharm. We did get the second slow off. Our pet is winning. So we're probably okay here. Um, I do like to pacify my pet during this fight because again, it's the last uh, mob in the cycle. So after this, we're gonna be releasing our pet. That's one reason. And then the other reason is if, for whatever reason, if things do go badly, and we die or we need to cap out, this pet is gonna path back. And if there's somebody fighting in a different room, we don't wanna get them absolutely obliterated. Um, so I, I tend to pacify on 22 once I've gotten the second slow off. Um, and then finally, another kind of neat little trick, and you can do this for basically any mob that flees, is once 22 gets to around 17, 16%, if you hit it with a blur, he's very likely to flee. Well, the mob's already very likely to flee. Um, but uh, if if your pet is low, he will be disinclined to flee. And so hitting them with the blanket will really... And you'll see he, he fled as soon as I hit the blanket there. And so now we're basically safe. Um, and that's basically all there is to it. And in fact, you saw there that... Um, we actually got fairly lucky with the slows. We didn't get any resists. Sometimes you can get a lot more resist on the slows, but we did get two charm breaks and it's entirely possible that if I had not swapped out Allure with Boltrans, that either one of those charm break scenarios, especially because he broke through Rune, uh, both Bedlam and Rune in both cases, it's very possible that that allure would not have been fast enough and that would result in a death or a cap. So this mob's pacified, it is now blurred, 22 is dead, and now we can sit here and AFK for a good 35 minutes. Um, and that's the camp. So hope you enjoyed and uh, hope you have um, good luck out here in the Plane of Mischief.